Well, if it isn't the world-renowned victor of the Rati Tawny, Henry of Scalitz. I delivered the things as you asked. I already know. My spies told me everything. She was wearing the necklace this morning as I asked in the letter. So you'll go to the rendezvous with her? Certainly not. I'm not going to pounce on her like a bull in rutting season. Her feelings must be allowed to mature gradually. Meanwhile, you'll get a potion for me. I thought you didn't believe in witches' brews. This is no witch's brew. It's an absolutely tried and tested elixir called Musk of Infinite Allure. There's a fellow in Sassau who sells it and he guarantees its success. Musk of Infinite Allure? <laughs> Sounds irresistible. All right, I'll try and get it for you. I'm sure I can rely on you. Here's some coin for your cost. Take care. Well, well, who have we here? Ah, the prodigal son returns. I knew you'd come back to me one day. Mm, let me guess, you saw it in a dream? I knew you were going to say that. But I had a divine revelation. That next time I won't be around to pull you out of the shit. Oh, well, I, I am sorry. Uh, but these things are sent to try our fortitude in the face of adversity. I'd like to try your fortitude. I've heard you know of some irresistibility potion, or whatever it is. Ah, oh, naturally. Musk of infinite allure. An age-old recipe, maybe even older. Tested by Moses himself. Moses? Well, how do you think he managed to get his people to follow him through the desert for 40 years? It's extremely potent. Yes, yeah, so it would seem. How much do you want for it? Who do you take me for? The wisdom of the ancients isn't something that's bought and sold in the marketplace. Did Jesus charge for his miracles? But since you ask, how about this much? What? That much? You're a crook. As King Solomon said, honesty is for those who can afford it. If you like, I can mix the elixir for you in exchange for a small favor. Oh, not again. Now, is that any tone to use with your master? For shame. Apologies, master. I was carried away by my thirst for knowledge. I understand your impatience, but the way to wisdom is narrow and arduous. And leads out the window. So what is it you want from me now? Ah, oh, my dear apprentice, everything has gone to the devil. I'm living from hand to mouth, sleeping on straw. And the local peasants won't buy from me. They say they don't trust me, as if I were some kind of charlatan. Can you believe it? Does this look to you like the face of a swindler? I'm an honest trader in sacred goods, whose only concern is the welfare of troubled souls. A regular good Samaritan. And any time now the slanderous gossip will spread here from Sasau. I should leave before things get worse. But I can't go anywhere until I've made a bit of coin. So, what's needed is to give the locals a bit of encouragement to open their hearts and purses. Sure. 
kick him onto the path of righteousness. What do you take me for? I, I wouldn't hurt a fly. Violence is for the dull-witted. We must gently demonstrate to them the necessity of buying my remedies. For example, to ward off a revenant. Revenant? What revenant? Well, the dead return from the grave, a corpse that the soul is unable to depart from, which wanders among the living, filled with rage at its wretched fate. Yeah, I saw something like that once. But it was just some drunk going home from the tavern after losing all his money at dice. Don't make light of such things. Now tell me, do you know how to deal with a revenant? Garlic and a crucifix should be enough, right? Those are things everyone should have. To repel malign spirits and other evils. You are my trained apprentice, but the ignorant villager is entirely at a loss how to deal with such dark forces. It is our sacred duty to prepare them for such threats. And how do you propose to do that? Well, they're all doubting Thomases. They need proof. We'll need a grave, an empty grave that we can use. There's one along the way to Sasau. But it's got one minor shortcoming. What's that? Well, it's not uh, entirely empty. Not entirely? What does that mean? You have to dig it up first. Well, that's a sin. Refusing to help the needy is also a sin. I haven't had a decent meal for 40 days and 40 nights. My conscience is clear where your stomach is concerned. Disturbing a grave is a, well, a grave sin. A grave is not in hallowed ground, so that's hardly worth one lord's prayer and penance. I asked a priest once, just out of curiosity. Why this particular grave? The locals don't like to talk about. So it's surely got some sinister past behind it. And in places like that, revenants sprout up like mushrooms after rain. Well, if that's how it is, we could open all wounds. That could easily set people against us. Again. Then it would be best if no one could connect us to it, wouldn't it? I'll need a spade, then. Yes. Dig it up and remove the remains, leaving no trace. And what am I to do with the remains? Keep them. Human remains are always handy to have around. Oh, great. And how do we spread the word of this revenant? There's a gossip in every village. Here too, a woman who'll spread news quicker than a dozen messengers on the fastest steeds. And what am I to tell this gossip? All you have to do is casually mention the empty grave and... Before evening, I'll wager the whole village will know about it. Where does this woman live? The last house on the left, on the road to Sasau. She was the first person I met here, and by the time I reached the village green, I already had a mob looking suspiciously at me. The rumor-mongering fishwife. And that's all? Not quite. You should ask her who was buried there. So we've got a story to work with. So, dig up the grave, talk to the gossip. And the remains. Uh, don't forget to remove them. Otherwise, no one will believe in the revenant. I might have known any task for a capon would turn into some insane escapade. Grave robbing. <laughs> Jesus. What the hell was that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, who's there? Yeah! I'll be with you, good wife. Has, uh, has something happened here? Heavens no. It's quiet here, unlike some other places. And what about that empty grave? What empty grave would that be now? The one beyond the village, alongside the road to Sassau. Just by the river, on the pine headland. How would you know it's empty, unless it was dug up? Oh, it's dug up, all right. Freshly. And empty. I saw it with my own two eyes. Lord in heaven! What in the name of... How come it's not in hallowed ground, anyway? Only unrepentant sinners are buried like that. Usually. I don't like to say. It's an old wound that's best forgotten. Whose grave is it? Well, once a long time ago, there was a young charcoal burner living here with his wife. There was always a lot of charcoal burners here. But this fellow worked alone. That's not an easy job for one man. No one wanted to work with him, or what? Ah. Oh. He was a hard-headed fellow, who always wanted to take care of his family himself. Well, I can understand that. It's always better to work for yourself than break your back for someone else. His wife was expecting, though no one knew it yet. He wasn't doing well at all. Soon enough, they had nothing to eat. And so he took to thieving. Well, I can understand him. To watch your family suffer like that. What could he do when they were going hungry? If we'd known how badly off they was, folk would have helped out. But he kept his troubles to himself. And did he get caught? Well, at first it was just a few eggs going missing from people's hen coops. But then it was anything that wasn't nailed down. And in the end, they caught him. And I suppose he was harshly punished for it. Even then he didn't let on why he was doing it. They whipped the skin off his back and banished him from Ledichkov. So justice was done, then? It wasn't enough for some folk. When the butcher found out he'd never get any compensation, he wanted them to chop off the charcoal burner's hands. If the bailiff hadn't talked sense into him, he'd have done it himself with his cleaver. Well, he got off lightly enough, then. And in the end, he got what was coming to him, and more. The butcher caught up with him? No, no. 
It was the mills of God turning slowly but surely. His wife bled to death in childbirth, and the child died with her. God have mercy on their souls. Amen. Nothing could have been done to save them. There was no one there. He had no one who would care for his wife. They say on that day, he parted ways with God forever. And he turned his back on the village too. I reckon he never forgave himself. Nor us, either. Uh, the Lord moves in mysterious ways. But how did he end up? Don't ask me that, lad. I beg you. Come now, good wife. You can't leave the story unfinished. I said no. Will you let it lie? Greetings. I know who was buried in that grave. A young charcoal burner. So begin. The tragic tale of the young charcoal burner who became entangled with the devil himself. No, oh, don't start. What devil? I'm trying to tell you. Ugh. He was from Ledechko. He was trying to eke out a living for himself and his wife, but he couldn't manage. When she fell pregnant, he took to stealing. Pride drove him from the straight and narrow path, and soon he sold his soul to the devil to fill his stomach. They caught him and punished him, but some of the people he'd robbed didn't think it was enough. Then when his wife died in childbirth, and the child too, he blamed everyone for it. Even God, apparently. But when the time came to pay his debt to hell, the devil had no use for his soul, and took his wife and child instead. The charcoal burner cursed God, who, who struck him down in righteous vengeance. But the dead man's soul never left his body. He came back as a revenant to vent his rage at God and men and take vengeance on the living. Jesus, did you listen to what I said at all? Sorry, did you say something? Well, oh, never mind. What do you want me to do with it? Well, the question is... What would the Revenant do to get revenge on the villagers? Well, Apprentice? He was stealing food from people, right? So, supposing he started again? We should steal from people? Disgraceful! Have you no shame? Maybe just a few eggs from hen coops, like the gossip mentioned. Hmm. Well, that wouldn't be too serious a sin. Will they put it down to the Revenant, though? They would, if I put some charcoal there instead. And their nourishment, he turned into ash. The gossip mentioned the butcher. It seems he was infuriated that the charcoal burner's punishment was too lenient. And the Revenant spoiled their meat with his malign touch. How's that? Spoiled meat is a classic example of a revenant's power. Huh. I thought it was the work of bad butchers. That too, sometimes. So, I should switch the good meat for bad at the butchers. What about the butcher woman? What about her? Her conscience was troubled on account of her man and she couldn't sleep. But I helped her so she's found some peace. So, no problem then. What? I'm supposed to scare the wits out of her and start all over again. All right, if you can find some other solution, you don't have to switch the meat. But I wouldn't worry about her. But make sure it's the same kind of meat. Not even a revenant will turn a cow into a chicken. What about his wife and child? No doubt he'd want to avenge their death. Well, how did they die? In childbirth. And when his love turned to rage... The water turned to blood. Nothing too original, but it's tried and tested. If you do it at the baths, everyone will hear of it. How am I supposed to do that? 
It might be a bit suspicious if I'm seen walking around with a pail of blood. No problem. There's a certain potion that will do the trick easily. He cursed God. That's very serious. Hmm. What is it that most brings God to mind? Uh, they don't have a church there. But everyone will have a rosary. I can't think of anything else. That's it! If folks start losing their rosaries, they'll have sleepless nights over it. You want me to steal rosaries? But that's... Or, or just exchange them. For what? Um, for nothing. <sighs> Great. So, switch eggs for charcoal, switch the meat, uh, colour the water in the baths, and sti um, switch the rosaries. That ought to do it. I hope so. Of course, if you come up with anything else, don't let me hold you back. Talking to people might give you ideas. Traders, the bailiff. Well, what if someone sees me in the act? They mustn't. Otherwise, it'll end up like Sasau all over again. Don't draw attention to yourself, or they'll put two and two together. Sure. I'll keep my head down. And how will I know if I've succeeded? I doubt it'll be announced on the market square. I'll be the first to know. They'll come running to me for a remedy, like hands at feeding time. Off you go and raise hell. But whatever he did, don't you think he deserves some peace? Dear Henry, after all the poor wretch went through, I'd say he's beyond any peace. Well, he certainly won't have any as long as I'm carrying his bones around with me. Ah, oh, but you know who those remains could help. Help? Who? How? Me, of course. And I'd pay you a nice price for a revenant's bones. But there is no revenant. Not yet. What do you say? Uh, maybe I should bury him somewhere else. What are you saying? That would be such a waste. Anyway, if someone saw you, the whole game would be out. Hmm. Well, supposing I do it later, when the fuss has died down. All right, if you must. But I don't know what you hope to get out of it. At least the poor wretch will have peace at last. Maybe. As long as you bury him in hallowed ground. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Like in Ratai, maybe? Well, that's probably the nearest. That gossip-mongering crone would know. True, I could ask her. If you must... But for heaven's sake, don't even hint to her what you're up to. Good luck, then. What happened to your... Good wife. Yes, lad. What can I do for you? You know, I can't stop thinking about what happened to that poor wretch. Have you no consideration for a poor old woman? I told you I don't want to talk about it. It might relieve you to talk to someone. Relieve me from what? Well, guilt. Guilt? Why should I feel guilty? Well, clearly something weighs heavy on your soul, just like the other villagers. The older ones. And I'd say it's connected to that empty grave. Well, that wretch returns as a revenant, and no one does anything. It's not just fear, but more like everyone is expecting some punishment that was bound to come one day. Oh, you might be right. Maybe it would give me some peace in my old age to finally tell the whole story. Several people from the village went to have it out with Lev. 
but he grabbed an axe and drove them off. He swore if anyone came near him, he'd burn their house down. Then he buried his wife and child in the meadows beyond Ledetrico. I saw him carving three statues there. Lev, you say his name was. Hmm. What kind of statues? There's three roughly carved beams there, each with a human face, except the smallest, which has no face at all. For the stillborn child, I suppose. What happened then? Nothing. He went back to his work, but never spoke to the villagers again. He'd even go all the way to Rate for food, rather than talk to anyone here. So he died alone in the end? Actually, it was the villagers. It was us that killed him. What? Just on account of his stealing? No, no. Not long after, fires started springing up in the village. And when the first house burned down, the folk were very angry. And of course suspicion fell on Lev. Everyone was dead certain it was him. They all remembered his words. Do you know how arsonists are punished, lad? No, I don't. By burning on the pyre. But no one wanted to waste time with the law. We just went to his house at night, smashed in the door and windows, and threw lighting torches inside. And that was the end of him. But the fires... the fires didn't stop. So he was innocent? He was. Well, I won't condemn you for it. It's for God to judge, but... May he forgive you for it. Thanks, lad. I pray every day for forgiveness, and it's a weight off my shoulders to tell someone. May the Lord watch over you. Rest in peace. What's the recipe for that potion you were talking about? You mean for colouring the water? Ah, well... Well? Pay close attention now. I'm all ears. How love turned to bloodshed. Once there was a knight who, though upright and noble-looking, had a prickly, unapproachable appearance. He fell in love with a fragile young maid, whom he saw with her sisters in a field, all wearing bright red wimples. But he was afraid his prickly exterior would frighten her. So he asked the advice of another knight, a pious and learned crusader, who carried the name of the patron saint of his order with pride. The pious knight told him he would arrange a rendezvous with the maid. All three would drink wine together by the river, and he would help his friend to get acquainted with her. This they did, but 
The maid fell in love instead with the pious knight. The stern knight was enraged and challenged his rival to a duel. The two fought long and fiercely, but they were equally matched. And so, in the end, they both fell mortally wounded, anguished at the tragedy her beauty had caused. The young maid took a dagger from one of the knights and plunged it into her own heart. Their bodies lay together on the ground, and the blood flowed from them into the river, turning the waters crimson. I thought you were going to tell me the recipe, not some fable. It is the recipe. I mean, the recipe is concealed in the story. What on earth for? So I don't forget it. All right. So what does it mean? I can't remember. Great. So if you don't know, who does? You'll figure it out, my loyal apprentice. I remember there are three plants in the story, but that's about all. But I know it was a simple recipe. It should be enough to grind the ingredients and brew them together for one turn. So all you have to do is work out what the ingredients are from the story. Sure. Why make things simple if you can complicate them? Good luck then.
Loy still haunting you? No, he's gone forever. Ever since I let go of my old secret and made amends with God, I've felt as light as a feather. I sleep like a newborn baby at night. Thank you a hundred times over, Henry. God bless. If you're up to no good, you'd better think twice.
bread. Bread. Rolls and pretzels. Baked goods fresh from the oven. Come get them. What do you need? May the Lord watch over you. This isn't spoiled enough. I can't put this there. The butcher will know right away it's not the same meat. Hmm, chickens. That should be no problem. I can't put this there. The butcher will know right away it's not the same meat. chickens for sure. <laughs> This is venison from roe deer. No wonder it's under lock and key.
I hope you're not after eggs. Why? Because they've almost all gone off. Can you imagine the st- I don't think I want- Terrible it is. Uh-huh. Enough to make you wretch. I see. A diabolical stink. Like you've got a dose of the- All right, all right, I get the picture. Aren't you a bit oversensitive? Maybe drop something rotten in it? God be with you. You look a bit worried, Bailiff. How can I not be? What with the whole village complaining about ghosts? Ghosts? An empty grave that they say a revenant crawled out of. They talk of nothing else. You don't think there's any truth to it? No, it's nothing but old wives' tales. But how come the grave is empty? You don't need any magic to dig up a grave. A spade will do. But why would anyone do that? Surely no God-fearing Christian would dig up the grave of some poor soul who hasn't even got the piece of hallowed ground to rest in. A God-fearing Christian? No. So you suspect someone? Could be. There's been a band of good-for-nothing itinerants hanging around recently. They weren't making any trouble, though, so I let them be. But this is going too far. How do you know it was them? Who else would it be? What about the Revenant? Oh, don't you start. That Revenant of yours is nothing but idle hands doing the devil's work. I'd send them packing myself if I had the time and the men. Supposing I help you get rid of them? You look like you know how to handle yourself. You bet I can. It wouldn't be wise to fool with me. I don't doubt it, but I don't want any bloodshed in my parish. There's enough trouble already with one long-dead corpse. Don't worry, Master Bailiff. I'll be the very soul of discretion. Then I'll gladly accept your help. Is there anything you need to know? Who are these people? Just some itinerants who'd rather roam the roads than do an honest day's work. They're not cutthroats, though, just petty thieves and beggars. What are they doing here? Damned if I know. Or where they came from. Ah, except for one fella who's from Ledechko. But the rest are from eh, God knows where. Are they armed? As much as any thief. Who isn't these days? Where can I find them? Last I heard, they were a bit away from the village, across the river by the old mine. That's all I need to know. I'll get going. Good luck. Take care. Yeah.
Yeah. What the hell? You've no business here. What do you want? The bailiff sent me after you. Oh, yeah. I'm shitting my... Well, you better take a good look at me and think again. Oh, all right. What does the bailiff want from us? I'm supposed to get you to leave. What's the problem all of a sudden? Someone hereabouts dug up a grave, and the bailiff reckons you lot are mixed up in it. Sure. Might as well blame us for everything. Why not? I suppose we burned down scallops, too. Don't play the innocent lamb with me. You know what I think? No. And I don't much care. Well, maybe you ought to. Oh, yeah? Why? Because I can offer you a job. Doing what? Don't expect us to break our backs for a few groschen. Perish the thought. No, it's something more suited to your, um, talents. I need someone to frighten people a little. Frighten who? The Ledetsko villagers. <laughs> Them lot are already shitting themselves on account of that revenant. Aye, but not quite enough to suit me. And how do you want us to do it? A bit of fire would be good, since the dead man was a charcoal burner. Some flames flickering in the night, that would scare them. Aye, all the more so, since the fellow was accused of arson. How do you know that? One of us is from Ledechko. He was only a youngster when it all happened. But he remembers the fires all right. I see. Well, that should scare them out of their wits then. You bet it will. So what's in it for us? I'll put in a good word for you with the bailiff, and he'll leave you be. What would you tell him? Well, I could tell him I saw someone else near the grave. Cumans, maybe? Well, that would help, I suppose. All right. Deal. Just make sure no one sees you. Don't worry. They always turn us a blind eye anyway. Yeah! Bayless. So, how did it go? I talked to those itinerants, and I'm sure they're not mixed up in it. How can you be so sure? Well, those lazy beggars. Digging up a grave is too much like work for them. Hmm, you could be right. Well, that hasn't helped much, then. I still have an empty grave and no explanation for it. Take care. So, how am I doing so far? Good work, Henry. The whole village is shaking in its boots. Soon, people won't step outside the door without saying three Hail Marys. Ugh, I'm glad to hear it. I'm beginning to feel haunted myself. Half the village is without rosaries. Someone even wanted to buy one from me. And did you sell it? I don't trade in such banal goods. But I sold him a cat's paw. I didn't know a cat's paw was good for warding off revenants. Henry, all the goods I have are good for warding off revenants. Everyone is talking about how all the butcher's meat went off 
after being touched by the hand of evil. What, does this look like the hand of evil to you? The baths are closed. No one will tell you why, but everyone is clearly frightened. No one in Ledechko would eat a single egg, even if they had any, because all the hens are hexed. Well, at least they've got fuel for their fires. So, the job is done, eh? Uh, not quite. But you just said the whole village is shaking with fear. Uh, the whole village, but for one individual. Well, surely that doesn't matter. That's what I thought, too. Only this fellow is giving everyone the benefit of his wisdom. He needs shaking up before he undoes your good work. But if he's not been scared yet, what more can I do to frighten him? Well, when he's not hanging around here ruining my trade, he's in the tavern boasting that he'd happily sleep by that empty grave to prove there's no revenue. Yeah, I bet he would. Exactly. He, he just needs a little, little persuasion. And once he's there, make it the most terrifying night of his life. Well... What are we waiting for, then? It's best to be well prepared. You ought to find out something about him, so there's no surprises. The gossip woman? Naturally. And Henry, before we get to that grave, you can still try and come up with more ways to frighten the villagers. The more terrified they are, the more groschen they'll be in it for me. Uh, for us, that is. Take care. Has your manhood been wilting of late? Then... morning. Good wife. You're still here, lad. I thought you'd have fled by now. Fled? Why on earth would I do that? Because there's a revenant on the prowl. The whole village is talking about it, and everyone is terrified. Ah, that. But I heard there's one brave lad who's not afraid. You mean Felix? Well, I don't know what his name is, but he's always arguing in the tavern that there's no revenant. That's him. The fool doesn't believe what's going on under his own nose. He hasn't the sense he was born with. Is he brave or just stupid? Surely he's afraid of something. Oh, I couldn't tell you. But if he's to be believed, he doesn't fear the devil himself. And do you believe him? Well, it's true he never seems bothered by anything. But then he's always with that other pair. What pair? Two mates of his. But he was alone in the tavern. Aye, they're not locals. But outside the village, wherever he goes, they go with him. He even said he'd spend the night at the graveside, just to prove there's no revenant. Aye, all talk and no action. Who are these two fellas? They're not bad lads, but they're no heroes, that's for sure. How's that? Them two have their fears, but then who doesn't? What are they afraid of? The first one wouldn't even go into the woods alone because he's afraid of wild animals. Ah, is that so? I wonder why. He got lost in the forest as a young lad and he wasn't found till next morning. Shaking and pale as a ghost he was when they found him. Poor lad. He must have been scared out of his wits. That he was. And what about the other one? He's afraid of fire. Why? His own father burned him, God forgive him. As a young lad, he was playing with fire and nearly set fire to the house. So his pa taught him a lesson he wouldn't forget. Poor lad. That's a terrible way to teach a child. My words, exactly. 
Oh, it's been an interesting chat. Thanks, good wife. from the flanks of Mount Olympus. Ah, it's you. So, how am I doing so far? I already told you, Henry. Everyone is scared out of their wits. I know. I was just wondering if anything had changed. I haven't heard anything new. Uh-huh. All right. This brave fellow, Felix his name is, if we can get him to spend the night at the grave, he won't be alone. Wherever he goes, he always has two mates tagging along. Hmm. Like he's afraid to be alone? Hmm. Could be. So, if we could get him there alone, it shouldn't be too hard to scare him. Well, maybe. Maybe not. He claims he's not afraid of anything. That's easy to say. I'm not so sure. Only... We have to get rid of the other two. What do you know about them? One of them is afraid of wild animals. Won't even go into the woods on his own. I see. And the other one? Well, he's afraid of fire, but I doubt an ordinary campfire would do the trick. Well, we'll think of something. Anyway, you take care of the first one. How, though? Haven't you learned anything from me? Talk to a dog. Uh, of course. Why didn't I think of that? Any particular one, Master? Oh, the most frightening one, of course. And how am I supposed to recognise him? One looks the same as another. By his bark, naturally. Can't you hear him? He'd scare the wits out of anyone. That's a dog. Either that or Satan in the guise of a beast. All right. And what do I do with him? Have a conversation with him and see if you can... Mimic his bark. Yeah, great idea. People will think I'm barking mad. God be with you. Come on then. Bark. <coughs> what a beast you are. All right, let's see. Ruff. Ruff. Again. Boo. 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 <coughs> Both! 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 Uh, that's still not quite it. Yeah. Both! 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 That's it! And now I'm officially the village idiot. <laughs> Gentlemen, good man. So, how did you get on? I found that mutt. Although from the noises it made, you'd hardly guess it was a dog. So you've learned to bark? I have, Master. So bark? I never thought I'd stoop so low. Bow! Bow! Perfect! But what if it's not enough? Ah, ye of little faith. Besides, can you think of any other way? If we want to have him there on his own, I could always knock the other two out. And what if he finds them unconscious? 
I can always haul them off somewhere he won't find them. Just make sure you don't botch it, Henry. It could easily turn very sour. Don't worry. But what about the other fella? Ah, oh, yes, apprentice. You have the good fortune to witness a genius at work. Watch and learn. An oil lamp. An oil lamp? Precisely. Isn't it ingenious? A marvelous invention, I grant you. What do you want to do with it? That's the clever part. I've hung a lamp like this over the Revenant's grave. All you have to do is shoot it down. It'll fall on the grave and burst into flames. Well, that could work. Only... Only what? How can you be sure I'll manage to shoot it down? I believe in you, Henry. You're my apprentice, versed in the ways of our craft. Right. We almost forgot. Anyway, you can practice. The lamp is already hanging up. It just hasn't been lit yet. Aye. I'll give it a go. And then what? Then you just have to goad our Felix into putting his money where his mouth is. But what if he doesn't fall for it? Refusing would ruin his credibility. Go and see him. I'll bet you anything, if you present it right, he'll jump at it. All right. I'll give it a try. Good. Don't delay, though. Practice with the lamp first, if you like, or just go straight to him. Yeah. 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 I've heard there's a revenant haunting these parts. Ah, you don't want to believe those old wives' tales. Well, it's not true, then. Of course not. It's just a lot of fairy tales. You're kind of sure of yourself, aren't you? That I am. And what's it to you? Nothing. It's just that, well, bold talk doesn't prove anything. Are you saying I'm lying? Well, can you prove your claims? What? Well, supposing you spent the night at that grave, like you say. That'd prove there's no revenant, wouldn't it? You reckon so? Um, I don't know. 
Yeah, for sure. Besides, since you're so fearless, it'd be nothing to you, right? Aye, that's right. How about something to buck up your courage? Nah, probably not. You don't need it. I don't, but it can't hurt. Thanks, Sam. So when are you going to do it? Just as soon as I can in the evening. And now you can... <laughs> Shh! Quiet, Henry! You'll give us away! <laughs> Sorry. What's that you're wearing? What do you think it is? I don't know who's some new fashion. It's my revenant costume, of course. <laughs> my apologies, Master, for not recognizing it immediately. You obviously still have a lot to learn. So did they come? Yes, all three. They're camping at the top of the hill. Right. I'll have time to get haunting then. Where do I start? I'll leave that up to you. The main thing is to scare off the two cronies first. I'll take care of fearless Felix. So I'll scare one off with the lamp? Yes. Just make sure no one sees you shooting. And the other one with fearsome noises. That will probably take a few attempts. Ideally, a bit at a time. Let him work up an appetite for more, so to speak. I couldn't have put it better myself. Just don't give yourself away. I won't, but... If they do happen to see me coming... Then you'd better vanish like a wisp of smoke, or make some excuse. And what will you be doing? I'll wait somewhere out of the way for a while, and then I'll crash in. So make sure the other two are gone by then. All right. God, no! I can't stand this! No, no, please, no! They're everywhere! They'll devour me! Jesus Christ, I've got to get away from here!
Hey. That was something. How did you like that, eh? Wonderful. I haven't had so much fun since I dressed up as the Pope. <laughs> did you see him run? Like all the demons of hell were on their heels. <laughs> One was quite enough, evidently. So what now? Now I just wait for my customers to turn up. Come and see me tomorrow before noon and you'll get your well-earned reward. Salt sprinkled. Good day. God be with you. Ah, oh, my dear apprentice, how happy I am to see you. So. It all worked out, then. Like a dream. I didn't sell half as much in Sasau. That's good news. Now, about that thing you promised me. Your well-deserved reward, certainly. Here you have it. Henry, what have you done? What do you mean? I did what you asked. Uh, didn't you overdo it a, a bit? I don't know. Why? Because I was left with nothing. They descended on me like a plague of locusts and made off with everything I had. But that's a good thing, isn't it? I'm not saying it's not. Just whether you didn't get a little carried away. Well, if I did, it was only out of loyalty to my esteemed master. What will you do now? I could go now. I've coin enough, but I'll wait a while before moving on. Why? I thought you didn't want to stay too close to Sassau for long. But what if you needed my help? Indeed. How could I forget all you've done for me? Well, at least I'll know where to find you. Would you teach me more? Certainly. I'd like to hone my skills. All right. Now, pay close attention. 
Would you teach me? Certain. I want to achieve. You can't be. Well. Take care. God save you. I think I have something that belongs to you. I found it in Scalitz. What do you mean? That's it. By all the saints, thank you. You don't even know how much you've helped us. And if you know my wife, then you'll know you just saved my life. You know what happened there. Help your neighbor. I probably shouldn't even tell you this, but Kunesh was after your treasure too. He wanted us to keep it ourselves. What? That... That... I'll give him... I mean to say, I'll tell everyone about him. I... I don't know what to say. Here, take this at least. I'm poor, but you saved us. See you later. Henry! God bless you. What troubles you? I got you that potion from the charlatan. What charlatan? He's a man of learning who even cured the Pope of impotence. But thanks, Henry. I really appreciate your help. Once I drink this potion, every woman will faint at my feet. But I'm only interested in one. The fairest creature on God's green earth. Yeah, the butcher's daughter, I know. And then what? A rendezvous. She and I, under the cloak of night, and you shall be my herald of exalted words. You will hide and prompt me from a book of poetry. I'll do what? Here's a book of poems. I'll need a little time to get ready. Meanwhile, you can learn some poems off by heart. You'll prompt me. Learn poetry? Me? That sounds... well, not exactly... Stop wasting time and get to it. Come back to me in a couple of hours. I have to get dressed up and groomed, and it'll take a while before the potion takes effect. Take care. God save. I need an experienced merchant to help me with the rebuilding of Pribislavitz. How would you like to move there? <laughs> me, a burger? Go and live in the woods? <laughs> Hold on. You're actually serious? Well, yes. You want me to give up the position I've been building for myself here for years? I'd have to be mad, young fellow. No, no. You should try and find someone else who knows about numbers, weights, and measures. See you later. Have you figured this
Thatcher's home was burnt to ashes. Yeah. God bless you. What troubles you? About that affair of yours. Henry, you don't pay attention to a word I say. I said come in the evening. Evening. See you later. Yeah. Huh? Hmm. Are you ready, Sir Hans? Henry? Something... Something's gone wrong. Open up. I'm not going to talk to the door. That potion tasted rather odd, and now I have a feeling my face is broken out. How do I look? 
You're imagining it, sir. You look as irresistible as ever, if not more. But I feel as if I just fell face first into a nettle patch. Well, you're just a little flushed from the excitement. It'll pass. If you're sure. So, what do you think? Can we go to the rendezvous? Why wait? Carolina won't be able to resist you. All right, then. Lead on, heart. And you, Henry, follow me. Tell me, Henry, how many girls have you had in your life? If you've had any at all, that is. Well, there's been a few, but I'm sure I can't compare with you. Ha! <laughs> Very true. One day, plays will be written about my amorous adventures. Comedies or tragedies? That might depend on how things go tonight. There's another very pretty girl living in this house here, but she's already got a suitor. Since the time her fellow threw me headfirst into a dung heap and kicked my ass for good measure. It seems your future subjects don't hesitate to take a stick to you when it comes to minding the women folk. I doubt he would have done it if he recognized me. I was, um, incognito. Almost there, you'll hide behind a gravestone or in the bushes and don't budge from there, otherwise you might scare her off. Hide, Henry. Time to get started. How do you know it's her who will come out and not someone else? She got the letter and necklace, didn't she? She knows that I'm... That is, her secret admirer is coming. And what am I supposed to do? What do you think, Dalt? Prompt me from that book of poetry. Turn up late to see the love of my life. Help! Help! 
Hey, hey! Move on. I don't want to turn up late to see the love of my life. Turn up late to see the love of my life. Who's there? I can't see you. Your most ardent admirer, fair maid. Uh huh. And do you have a name? What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would. Still be a flower, wouldn't it? Start now. What are you saying? I can't hear you. Dental night, why linger on? I yearn thus for my love so long. Without her words to still my breast, who shall set my soul to rest? Gentle knight, why linger on? I earned this from my love so long. Whip out your worthy silky breasts, who shall suck my salty bits? No! And now my heart in sorrow dwells, from melancholic pining swells, since I, alas, was forced to part, from the mistress of my heart. I know my horses sort of well. Some alcohol from nine to twelve. Seems I always have whores apart from the mistress of my heart. Psst. What on earth are you saying? What's that hissing? It's a, a feral goose here in the bushes. Ah, Lord, let me not wait in vain. I long to see my love again. O oh, gentle sir, be of good cheer. I shall not cling to another, dear. Landlord, let me not wait in vain. I long to sing and laugh again. O oh, gentle sir, get off your chair. I shall not bring you another beer. Jesus, Henry, what kind of yokel nonsense are you babbling? Me? You're the one who's babbling. You're an odd one. I've never heard such peculiar poetry in my life. Where on earth did you come up with it? Run for it, Hans. Run, while there's still time. What on earth for? It's going splendidly. How did you like it, dearest? Ah, how tender you are. Father is coming! Hide! Said. Well, I have a bad feeling about this, Hans. I think we should. Are you still there? Still here, my love. How could I have apart from you? Father's coming. He'll kill you. He will not. Because it'll never cross his mind where I'll be. Henry, it's time for me to claim my prize. Whatever happens, cover my back. There you are, you seducer. Now you'll see how a butcher protects his daughter's honor. Buy me time. You got some explaining to do, you bastard. What are you after, you bastard, sneaking around an honest citizen's house in the dark? I went to mourn over the grave of my great-grandmother. Oh, yeah. Then what are you doing right beneath my window, eh? Now, the question is, why are you trampling on great-granny's grave, eh? Enough of your horse shit. One more word, and I'll have you. <laughs> you really came. How could I not, my dearest? <laughs> Not so fast, Prince Charming. But, since you're here... Hey! What was that? What was what? That noise! I'm sure I heard a strange noise. We're here in the cemetery. Maybe restless spirits, what do you reckon? I'd swear it came from the window of my own house. Well, what's that got to do with me? Someone's been creeping around after my daughter. I come out. And I find you here. 
quite a coincidence, eh? So, out with the truth. You're quite mistaken. I've never laid eyes on your daughter, and if she looks anything like you, I'd rather keep it that way. Why, you fucking... <laughs> oh, 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 there's, there's a lace here. Oh, untie it. Oh. Don't try to make a fool of me. I heard it clearly. What was that? Are you all right? It seems to me you're hearing things other folk can't hear. That's not good. You're saying I'm hearing voices in my head? Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Saint Euphrosina Palotsk heard voices too, and she found in a monastery and churches and things. I heard voices too. Uh, well, could have been voices. I wouldn't swear to it though. Look, fellas, I was standing right here and I didn't hear a thing. Do you take me for a madman? Whatever you are, I want to know what you're doing under my daughter's window and who was talking to her. I heard it clear as day. Good neighbour, it can't be denied that old age dulls a man's ears. I'm here alone, praying for the souls of the good people resting in the cemetery. I've nothing to do with your daughter. Hmm, that voice sounded different to yours, though. But where did he get to? You must have seen him. Unless... Unless you're covering for him. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. oh. Yes. What the fuck are you playing at? My patience is wearing thin. Jesus, stop your damn screeching. Jesu, Jesu, Maria, vola, la, vola, la. Jesu, Jesu, Maria, Jesu, Yemine. Buddha, little frappet, nebone. Buddha, little frappet, nebone. Christ Almighty. Let's go, fellas. This one ain't right in the head. The guards will have him for screeching after curfew. Let's not get mixed up in it. But if I ever see you here again, I'll beat some sense into your idiot skull. God be with you, lad. What can I do for you? How did it go with Carolina, Sands? Henry, it was the most wonderful night of my life. She was completely entranced by my courting. I hardly had to touch her, and she melted in my arms. And then she took me to paradise. It was glorious. It was sublime. Thanks, in part... To you, my faithful henchman and messenger of love. You've earned your reward. It was an honour, Sir Hans. When are you going to see her again? Oh, 
oh, I'm not going to see her again. All beautiful things must come to an end. And, after all, I am a nobleman and she is the butcher's daughter. Well, that's how it ends, with the love of your life. After the secret gifts, the letters, the intrigues, reciting poetry in the moonlight. My eloquence was wasted on her, Henry. Imagine, the silly cow couldn't even read. She returned the letter to me unopened. Here's the letter, Henry. Read it. At least you're capable of appreciating my literary talent. Read and learn from a poet. Goodbye. And well, I'm sure we can come to some agreement, your lordship. Well, bearing in mind, Master Butcher, that we have nothing to come to agreement about yet. Well, yes, sir. Uh, well, I mean, no, sir. Well, I mean, I thought I ought to let you know what happened. I guess my daughter's good name could be Bismur. Bismur. Oh, dragged through the mud. And his young lordship's too, of course. Well, only if she should find us. Only if she should find herself with a permanent reminder. Oh, well, that could happen yet, sir, couldn't it? I mean, if her belly starts to grow, you know how word gets around, and, well, folk would assume that Sir Hans is the father, even if some other young fellow was to come along in the meanwhile, and, well, you know, uh, well, you already know, the girl can't be watched. Are you trying to blackmail me? Have you forgotten that I am the lord of this town, and that you are nothing but a stinking butcher? Oh, God forbid, sir, I, I'm just thinking of his young lordship's reputation. And my girls, but, uh, of course, if his young lordship was to recognize the bastard as his own and pay for his upbringing... You can thank your lucky stars you're the only butcher around here. Otherwise, I'd have you out on your ear this very day. But, sir, I'm only to... Here, take this, you damn scoundrel, and never show your face here again. Oh, thank you, your lordship. I'm, I'm sure this would be enough. Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. Blasted fool cape on. I'll wring his neck. Neck. I'll have his balls on a platter! Oh, 